Hi there, my name is Letitia Finder and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a part of the Creative Arts Collaboration monthly hashtag event. The hashtag for this month is Love Fall Art. Today I will be showing you how to paint these beautiful watercolor leaves. Because what's more fall than that? To get started, you'll need your watercolor supplies. I'm just using some Canson XL watercolor paper. For paint, I'm using my Windsor Newton Cotman Travel set. For a paintbrush, I'm using, it's kind of scratched up, but just to show you, I'm using a thin brush. This happens to be an above ground brand size zero, so it's just a very thin pointed brush. You also need a pencil and an eraser, your water for your watercolor, and I also have some paper towel just on this side here that I like to use while I'm painting with watercolor or you know really any kind of paint to dab off excess water, paint, or what have you. Okay, right, so that's all you need. I'm going to be showing you how to paint these three leaves today. I'm also going to draw them for you so you'll get to do the whole process with me. Since it is Follow Along Friday, this will actually be um, kind of a two-part video. I'm going to show you how to paint these leaves. And then uh, tomorrow's video for the hashtag event, we're going to be making a card with these leaves. I decided to separate them just because, you know, uh, you might want to make, or you might want to know how to paint leaves, but you might not. You know, I'd be interested in making the card. So, <laughs> two separate videos. Alright, so we're going to start off with this one. And this is probably the most simple one here. So to draw it, it's very easy. You're just going to go in and do a teardrop shape. But instead of rounding it where you would here, you're going to bring it off into a little point. Now I'm painting these a little bit bigger than I'm going to use them for the card, just so that you guys can see it clearly. I'm just going to go in and add the little end to the leaf here, which is basically just a little stick. And I'm just going to draw in some lines to guide where I want the veins of the, the leaf to be. You see, very simple. Now these leaves, if you look at them in person, and you know, if, if you want real references, you can go out, it's almost fall, you can go see some leaves. Or if that's not available or you really don't want to do that, you can just find some images online and you can get some great close-ups of leaves and whatnot to, to get an idea of what you're really drawing and painting, because that's that's always the best way to do it is to do it from life or to do it from a really great reference photo. Okay, so they these leaves generally don't actually have like a straight line here. They're actually really, really fine little bumps. So I'm just going to kind of squiggle them in to remind me that they're there. Because we're going to paint in some of them as we go. Alright. And this leaf I'm going to be doing like a golden color. So you can see it's like more of the yellow and brown. because we're doing fall colors here. I'm just start it off. I'm going to load up some water on my brush and go ahead and paint that on. Just get a nice base layer of water. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with a lemon yellow just as a, a base color. So it's, it's quite a bright yellow. It's a lighter bright yellow. So if you don't actually have that color, you can always get something similar or just use the lightest uh, yellow that you have. This color is going to act as kind of a contrast, but also as our highlight. just to kind of offset the golden and the brown that we're going to be putting in there. Okay. 
and I'm going to go in with, I have some cad yellow here. I'm going to be using that. And I'm just using it very, very sparingly, like very watered down and not much paint on there. So I'm going to build it up a little bit. So I want to put some just at the bottom here. And when I'm painting, I am kind of trying to avoid where, um, where I'm putting the, the little veins of the leaves because it's going to be a different color. It's actually going to be like a brown. It's going to be a burnt sienna. So I, I want it to dry in time so that I can show you. And when it's wet, it just, it obviously bleeds out and it'll water it down a bit too much right now. So I'm just trying to avoid that for the sake of time and, you know, my sanity. <laughs> I'm just going to go in and place this. I'm layering up now, so I'm doing it a little bit darker. And I want to place this definitely around the edges. And more towards the bottom, in the middle here. Good. All right, now I'm going to go in with some burnt sienna. Again, I'm just doing this very here. Maybe I can show you guys actually what I'm doing with my palette. It'll be easier to show you with this one on the end. <laughs> so I'm going into my burnt sienna, which is on the bottom here, and I'm loading it up with water. Just kind of testing it on the end here to see how much I have exactly. Alright, and I'm going to go in and start placing it down. So this is going to be going on the veins of the leaves as like their shadow. And then also the stem. I really love it when the leaves start to turn color, so I was kind of excited to do this hashtag event. If you guys are actually interested in seeing more videos by different members of the CAC, you can just go ahead and search that hashtag, which is hashtag lovefallart, and you'll get a ton of videos coming up. Um, we also have uh, a YouTube channel dedicated for the CAC, so it's called the Creative Arts Collaboration. And we have playlists on there. So members are also adding their videos into that playlist so that they're all kind of gathered in one place. Which is how I've been watching them. And they're really awesome. I actually just got finished watching um, Cinnamon Cooney's, uh, the, she's the art Sherpa here on YouTube. Um, just got finished watching her witchy one. If you haven't checked out her paintings she basically walk, walks you through a painting so her videos are about an hour long sometimes a little bit longer and she just does the whole thing with you so it's really great if you're a beginner go ahead and check her out she's pretty awesome she's definitely one of our leaders over there at the CAC <laughs> all right so I've just laid down that burnt sienna and I'm gonna go in with a darker brown I have burnt umber, so that's what I'm using. And I'm not loading up too much water on that. I'm just trying to pick up some more color than water and bring that brush to a fine point. So you're going to see here, it's going to be a crisp line, like so. These bits are still a little bit wet, so it's bleeding out a tiny bit, and that's fine. I can go back over them later. Or if you like it, you can keep it. It's your work. You do what you want with it. We're not all going to have the same taste. We like the same things, and nothing's ever going to turn out the same twist, right? So, blend that out a little bit. Okay. And I'm actually going to go back in with some of that um, burnt sienna, just a little bit, lots of water. I'm going to come in 
and add just a bit to the edge of this leaf. Actually add a bit more here too. Just to bring out some of those ridges. I'll also darken it just a tiny bit with some burnt umber. But this sienna has a kind of a red undertone to it. So it really brings out kind of that golden color. They'll work very well together too. So. Alright. It's looking good. Go back in with that burnt ember. And I'm just going to fix some of these veins here. There we go. And I'll just add some definition to finish this off. Alright, it's looking good. I think I'm just going to do one more, la one last thing to it, and that's just going to add, be to add a little bit more uh, cad yellow. Try to load it up with more paint than water, just to give it a thicker golden look here. There we go. All right. Oh, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it. I know I just mentioned the Cinnamon's Channel, which is the Sherpa. Um, I don't think I made that clear. She does acrylic paintings, so it's not, it's not watercolor, if you're curious. I actually tend to work in, you know, a variety of media. I started off using acrylic, and uh, I got into watercolor when I was... Um, when I was in art school, they never actually really taught us anything that was never like a class or, or an assignment or anything. It just, just ended up being something I enjoyed and wanted to get into. So I did. <laughs> All right. And so now we're going to move on to the second one. And that's this one right here. And out of all three of them, this one is the hardest to draw. <laughs> just because, um, you want it to be fairly symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. I mean, it doesn't have to be like mirror image. Um, you just eyeball it, but it's it's the most difficult for me anyways. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to do it. It doesn't have to be super hard. And then we're gonna paint it um, this beautiful red and golden color. All right, so to start this one off, I'll just move my paint over. This one definitely uh, is where the eraser comes in handy. <laughs> it's great to look at references for stuff like this too, right? So we're just doing like a, almost a frown shape, just a curve. And we're going to bring that to a point. And from there, we're going to stick that out of it. It's going to come up into another point. I'm going to bring it, so basically this whole leaf is just a bunch of peaks and points. So we're going to curve this next one up a bit. And it's going to be definitely longer than this last one. Let's say this is about a midpoint. This is a long, tall point. So we're going to bring the next one up to a midpoint again. And then the next one is a long one. And you're going to come all the way down to a short one because this is where um, the middle of your, I'll just draw a little midline there for you, the middle of your uh, leaf is going to be. Let's just bring that up and then you end it in a leaf point. And just a big point. 
like that. So then the challenge is, because that's not too challenging, <laughs> challenge is to do it on the other side. <laughs> I'm just going to erase a bit of those lines there. There we go. Now I always like to start on the bottom because that's what I did on the other side, so I'm just comfortable with doing it. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, especially when they're falling leaves, you know, they're falling onto the ground, they're decaying, they're, they're not healthy anymore. So they're not going to be perfect. They might be beautiful, but they're not going to be perfect. Okay, maybe in their own way. <laughs> Add that, and then we're going to go up. And then all the way down. a bit sketchy. We'll just clean up the lines a tiny bit. All right. So I will just make those a tiny bit shorter. There we go. And then again, you just add in your end here and draw in a couple vein lines just to guide you. Alright, so we're going to paint in this one. Again, I'm just going to start off with a thin, thin layer of water. Very, 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 very thin layer. And when I'm drawing these, I'm not pressing super hard onto the paper. Um, because I don't want the pencil to indent in it. I don't want it to like engrave into the paper. But I need it to be dark enough to see. So I'm not super concerned about the actual pencil marks. I mean, you can try to, like there are a few there. You can try to erase them um, if you like, but they pretty much get covered up by the watercolor anyways. Um, so it's not, you know, a huge concern. I'm just going in with some cad around the edges here some cad yellow and um, yeah so you're not uh, I'm not too concerned about that I'm also not so concerned because I'm going to be cutting them out for the card now if you're not going to be cutting it out um, and you don't obviously need to be showing people how to draw it so when you're doing it yourself so if you want to do those uh, those leaves very light like in the pencil marks go ahead like that's just like mine are pretty dark just to show you guys so it picks up on camera but again I'm definitely not concerned about it I think there's actually a beauty in uh, in seeing sketchy lines and process process work on on a piece because it is a part of the drawing it is you know it is what it is you know, some of the exercises that we had to do in college were to not erase. Leave those marks. Leave the drawing as it ended up, right? Okay, so I've done that. And now I'm just going to go in with a, a CAD red here. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. I have a CAD red. I'm just going to take a bit of that. And as you can see on the top here, like I do mix my colors. You can mix watercolor just like you mix any other paint. And I'm going to put a bit of it here. And then I'm going to go in with some of that cut yellow. And it's going to make an orange. It's in like a nice golden orange. And I'm going to go in with that. A little more water. to blend it into the yellow a bit more. And I'm just going to do a whole base coat there. It's not going to stay that color in the middle, but why not? It'll blend out. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to go in with hmm, a very, very light 
pudding of burnt sienna. Lots of water. Not much paint. And I'm going to be putting that kind of in the middle here. And just blending that in. Alright, right on top of that, I'm going to go back in with this cad yellow, or sorry, the cadmium uh, red. And I'm just going to do a few drops there and blend it out. It is a very um, harsh red, a very red red, and that's fine. But you don't want that like all over it. It's gonna it's not gonna look uh, very realistic. I mean this I mean these clearly aren't super realistic or anything, but that's just not what leaves do. <laughs> right, and I'm gonna go back in with that color and I'm gonna put some on the edge here. And you can use whatever red you have. Like I also have a crimson here. I can show you that. It's a very nice color. It's actually more orangey, which would work well on here. Why don't we just mix those? So I'm just gonna do a little bit of that there. Blend it out with some water. All right, and I'm going to show you a little trick here because I'm an impatient person and you guys don't want to be watching this for 10 hours. <laughs> I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel, I'm going to stick it down and blot it back up. So it is going to give you a bit of texture here, which is fine. I do this um, if I get maybe just a little bit too much paint or a little bit too much water, um, just helps pick it back up. So I did that so that I could keep going with this a little faster. And I'm going to do the veins of leaf now. And I'm going to do it the same way I did the other one. So I'm going to take my burnt sienna. I'm going to go in, start with the stem here. And then I'm going to go up. Again, these can be a little thicker because they're kind of like the, the guide or the background, like the shadow almost, um, of the bit I'm going to be putting in in a minute. And you can see that this burnt sienna kind of blends in the other colors we put down. So it just gives it a beautiful look. So I'm going to still take just a tiny bit more of it. I'm going to blend some into the bottom here. a little bit more too. A little bit of an ombre effect, I guess. Okay. It's a good way to think of it, I think. <laughs> Alright, now I'm going to go in with my burnt ember. Again, not a lot of water, a lot of paint though. And we're going to bring that brush to a point. And this is why I'm using a very thin brush. I'm going to go in, just line it, All right. and then I'm just going to add some shadows here and there, put on the edges. That's looking good. I'm just going to blend this out a little bit. There we go. Alright, I'm going to move on to our last one. So 
our last one is this bunch of leaves on the end here. That's a very, very simple and actually very quick to do. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to make an S shape. This is the stem. This is that big, long stem that's going to hold all of those leaves. Like so, yes. All right. And to start it off, we have a couple of little leaves on the top. And so I'm going to branch off a stem here. And we're drawing these leaves in that teardrop form, how we did this first one. I got that one there. Then I'm going to add another one on the end here. And they tend to be, if you look at pictures of them, or if you see some outside, in, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of in pairs. So there'll be one on each side. Okay, and we're going to go in one up here, a bit of a bigger one, and then to give it some visual interest we'll put one kind of poking out and sticking behind that one, and just one more right here. So, very simple. All right. I'm going to start off by painting the leaves. And what I'm going to do is go in with some of this um, yum, uh, lemon yellow and water, lots of water. I'm going to just coat these. These are going to be our leaves that have just started to turn. They're still green. I guess kind of how they would be like right now, at this time of year. Well, they're kind. It's kind of getting colder, so they're starting to say, "Hey, no more of this." <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go in. Sorry, when you see my hand go over here, it's I'm reaching for water. <laughs> I should probably move it. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go in with our green. And oops, my green pot's kind of coming out. Let me fix it. <laughs> those pop back in there. See these are great because you can replace them. Very simple, very easy. You can buy the little half half um, things for them. I haven't had to replace any of them yet. I, I didn't get this that long ago. So hey, okay, so I have a sap green a sap green here. I'm gonna go in with that. It's a really lovely color. Perfect, perfect for this. So you can see what color it is. I'll show you it's this color right here. I'm going to water that down for a bit. And I'm going to start placing it in here. We will layer this up a bit. That's the beauty of watercolor. That's what you got to do. I guess that's actually kind of the beauty of every paint. Got to work with it, layer it up, get it just right. All right, just leave some of that yellow popping through here and there. Right, now I'm going to go in, I have this viridian hue, I can't really see that, can you? This viridian hue right here, which is represented by sap green. I'm going to take a bit of this. Now this is, see, a very kind of bright, green. 
not something you see just in nature so often, I guess. <laughs> in plant life, anyways, it, it's a bit maybe too vibrant. So I'm going to take some of the sap green. And I'm just going to mix that in there. And this is going to make a really beautiful color. You can see it here. Actually, that might even still be a bit too bright. I'm going to add a little bit more sap green in there. And you know what? Why don't we go ahead and throw some cad yellow in it. I'm going to tone it down a bit more. There we go. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to place it in. Now I want to do this quickly and keep it pretty wet because I'm going to blend it out with the sap again, which is going to give me a different base to it. I'm just going to help it out a bit while I'm blending it in. Okay, and I'm going to quickly go back in with my sap green and layer that in. And then I'm going to take some paper towel and dab some of that. Because I like these ones to have a bit more of a subtle look, with the beautiful greens kind of just poking through. Um, where did my paper towel go? <laughs> oh, we'll rip off a new piece. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna dab that. You can see that created a beautiful little mixture of color there. Just colors poking through. I'm gonna see if you waited a little too long like you did here. You can go in with some water. Just add a touch more. I'm going to bring some of that paint back up because obviously watercolor is activated by water. There we go. I think that's really beautiful. Definitely gives you that nice watercolor look that everybody's going for these days. Alright, I'm just going to go with a tad more, tad, or tad more sap green. Not much water, just the paint. Just to add a few shadows in here. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to work on this stem quickly, and to do that, I'm just going to be taking some of this green we made, laying it down, I'm going to be taking a little bit of um, the burnt sienna, lots of water, And going in and dulling it out a bit to make them look like fall, like fall leaves, fall stem, fall whatever. <laughs> All right, and then going with that sap green. I'm just going to give that a moment to settle. 
and while I'm doing that, I'm just going to throw in a few veins. So I'm going to go in with that sienna again, same way I did the other ones. And the veins don't have to be very prominent on these ones. I'm just going to dull this out a bit. All right. And then you know the drill. We go in with our burnt umber. And we just start adding some of those darker, more prominent lines. Oops, sorry guys, I got something kind of stuck on my brush here. Now I know this ended up being a bit of a longer video. And I mean, that's mostly just because I did three leaves and I'm trying to, to uh, show you as best I can, as much detail as I can. So forgive me for it being so long. I hope you guys like these. I certainly enjoy doing them. I think I'm going to try to do more things like this more often. Maybe you guys can do like paint along with me sort of videos. Maybe like a painting from start to finish so you guys can also make it or I don't know. We'll kind of see what happens. Let me know what you guys are interested in. You can do watercolor. We can do um, acrylic. It won't be doing oil like that just because oil takes forever and ever to dry so it's not really something I can do kind of live or film and then do so it's a bit much for that all right and I'm gonna call this one done actually I'm just gonna blend that out just a tiny bit more some more green all right and there we have it. I have some leaves. So these are the ones I did before. These are the ones I did with you guys today. They're very nice. So don't forget to join me tomorrow. All right, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, you can click that subscribe button below and you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. I post every Friday for Follow Along Friday. Don't be shy, I love to talk to you guys. You can talk to me in the comment section below or through any of my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. My usernames are in the description box below. If you make anything using my tutorials, be sure to show me. Also, if you have any questions or requests, be sure to let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to check back tomorrow to see the card I'm making with these beautiful leaves. And use the hashtag lovefallart to find videos by lots of other creative YouTubers. Until next time.